Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. This video is sponsored by Tagatize, the easiest way to run tag all on multiple Revit views and sheets. Also, say goodbye to overlapping tags. Tagatize will turn this into this. Try Tagatize completely for free using the link in this video's description. Welcome back. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a dynamic facade in Revit using a simple Dynamo script. We'll use a custom parametric curtain panel family and an attractor curve to control how much each panel opens or closes. By the end, you'll see how this workflow can quickly generate striking architectural facades. If you don't have much time and just want to run this script right away, simply find in the video's description a link to download this script directly. If you, however, want to learn to code this yourself, let me show you how right now, step by step. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. Let's start fresh with a new conceptual mass family. I'm using the default template, so let's open the level 1 view. Here I'll draw a circle of a 50 meter radius. This is just to give us a sense of scale. Next, I'll switch back to the 3D view so we can lay out the overall height. Here, I'll add two more levels for the mass, level 2 at 7.5 meters and level 3 at 50 meters. These are just nice round numbers that give us a good proportion to work with. Now, I'll draw the edges of the new surface. For the bottom edge, I'll use spline through points to add a gentle curve. I'll place a few points along the bottom, then pull the middle point down slightly to create a soft dip. You can exaggerate this if you want a stronger wave later. If your points feel too sharp, select the spline and nudge the handles until the curvature looks smooth. The exact shape isn't precious, we just want some variation that will read nicely when the panels respond to the attractor. We can always come back and tweak the control points later. For the top edge of the surface, I can simply copy the spline we created and paste it aligned to the top level, level 3. Alright, time to create the surface. I'll select both spline curves and click create form. That should give us a clean, single surface spanning between our rails. If it's inverted or twisted, undo once, adjust your curve directions and remake the form. Now let's set up the attractor curves we have referenced from Dynamo. I'll simply select the bottom edge of the surface and copy it to the level 1 plane. Next, let's go to the plan view and then move the new curve away from the surface. The idea is to have this curve sitting in front of the surface, not on it. Next, I will move a few control points of the new spline to make it more straight. This will allow us to vary the distance between this curve and the curtain panels we will place on the surface. The exact path is up to your design intent. Tighter bends will create a stronger, more localized reaction in the panels. Long, gentle curves make a calm gradient. Back in 3D, I'll opt it to confirm the spatial relationship. If you want to use this mask directly, just download it using the link in the video description. Before we continue, a quick shout out to our sponsor, Tagatize. With Targetize, it's never been easier to tag multiple Revit categories at once using your favorite tagging styles. Say goodbye to spending countless hours untangling Revit tags. After running Targetize on this view, for example, all my tags are perfectly readable. None of them overlaps with their hosts or other elements in the view. If I think this tag, for example, can be placed better, I can just select it and click Next to tell Targetize to try the next possible tag position. Each time I click the button, Targetize moves the tag for me and I can keep doing this until it gets to a tag position I like. There we go. That's much better. Try Tagitize completely for free today using the link in this video's description. Moving on, we can start creating the curtain panel family that we apply to the mass surface. Open New Family and choose Curtain Panel Pattern Base. In the default 3D view, you will see a single pattern tile with four blue nodes at the grid intersections. Select the pattern grid and set tau pattern to rectangle in the properties. The exact horizontal vertical spacing is not critical for the setup. It only controls the preview size of the tau while we build. Activate create point reference point and hover over one grid edge until Revit snaps to that edge. Place one point on each of the two opposite grid edges so they sit somewhere between the corners. Create a line connecting these two opposite points and turn it into a reference line. Then. Place a new point right in the middle of this new line. I can then place two new points on top of this middle point. When doing this, make sure you have set the active work plane to the horizontal plane at the midpoint's location. Next, move one new point up and the other new point down, so they no longer overlap the midpoint. 
Now, use annotate a line dimension to dimension between the two upper panel quarter points. When you do this, don't forget to first set the work plane to the plane running along the line that connects these two corner points. If the dimension is too big, feel free to change the view scale to make it smaller. Select the dimension and click label in the options bar to create a new parameter name width. Tick reporting parameter so this dimension reads the actual distance rather than driving it. You see a large readout like width equals 500 in the view to confirm. Now we need to control the height of the highest midpoint using a new parameter. I'll call it open distance and make it an instance parameter. For the lowest midpoint, the height should be the reverse value. So I'll add a new parameter to control it. Let's call this one negative open distance. This second parameter should also be an instance parameter. Moving on, to ensure these parameters are always in sync, let's tie them together using a new formula like this. Now, when I move one point up, the other point will go down by the same amount. Next, we need to add one new point on top of the highest midpoint, and then another new point on top of the lowest midpoint. Make sure each new point is hosted on the vertical work plane of its host. To control how far each new point is away from its host, let's select the higher point here and tie its offset value to a new parameter. I'll call it half width. Then we can do the same for the lower new point. Its value is the reverse of the previous one, so we need a new parameter here as well. I'll call it negative half width. In the Family Types dialog, let's set up some formulas for the new parameters. I will make sure half width is always width divided by 2. Actually, that reminds me I need to make it an instance parameter here. And negative half width is always the reverse of that value. Here, you can see Rabbit has reminded me again to make another parameter an instance parameter instead of a type. So let's do that. There we go. Now Revit is happy. With all those points in place, let's start connecting them pair by pair. This will help us create the profiles we can later use to create the solid geometry of our panels. When you do this, make sure to turn any newly created line into a reference line before creating the next. This will allow the lines to remain after being used for solid geometry generation. We now have two points created for each profile. However, we actually need four points per profile. So let's add a few more, like this. The key here is to make sure each new point is hosted on the horizontal work plane at its host location. Once these new points are in place, I can select all three of them and change the offset value to what I want to use for the thickness of the curtain panel, let's say 100 millimeters. I'll also tie this value to a new parameter we can flex later. Let's call it thickness. As you can see, some points are offset in the opposite direction. To fix this, let's reverse their offset value. And then tie that to another new parameter called negative thickness. Since we love using formulas, let's create another one. This will ensure that negative thickness will update whenever the original thickness changes. Now that we have created three points for each profile, let's add in the fourth one. This new point should be hosted on the vertical web plane of the third profile point. Repeat that for the other two profiles. We can now move each of these three new points away from the work plane by using the offset parameter again. This time, I can use the half width parameter we created earlier. As usual, some points have gone in the opposite direction. For those, I can simply use the negative half width parameter to correct their positions. To finish the profiles, let's connect each available pair of points using the splines through points command. For each new line created, remember to turn it into a reference line using the properties panel. I will now quickly do the same for the other two profiles. Finally, select the first two profiles and click Create Form to generate a solid loft between them. We can do the same to create the second solid. And there we go. That's the first half of the curtain panel created. The second half is almost exactly the same, except that its middle profile moves down from the plane of the curtain panel instead of up. Therefore, I'm just quickly creating it here so we can see the final result. And finally, here's the complete curtain panel family. To prove that it's fully parametric, let me flex a few parameters here. As you can see, things like open distance and panel thickness can be fully controlled. 
With that ready, let's prepare our mass surface to apply this curtain panel to it. Let's switch back to the mass family now. Select the mass surface and then on a ribbon choose Divide Surface. Under U-Grid, change layout to Fixed Distance and set distance to 1500 millimeters. Under V-Grid, also choose Fixed Distance and set distance to 500. I will also move the grid origin point to the top left corner so that I will have fewer partial panels in this system. With the divided surface still selected, go to the surface pattern control on the ribbon. Choose the pattern based curtain panel we built in the previous part. Revit will populate every tile on the surface with that adaptive component. This may take a few minutes to apply, especially if your mass surface is large and the number of panels is high, so please be patient. And voila, the whole system has been generated. You can of course flex the panel's properties here as well. For example, try a different panel thickness. Or use a new open distance value to make the system as open or close as required. With this curtain system in place, we are now ready to use Dynamo to dynamically adjust the openness of each panel based on its distance to the attractor curve. However, this tutorial has become quite long, so I will show you how to create that Dynamo script in part 2 of this video that will be released next week. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications to see part 2 as soon as it drops. Before you go, check out our sponsor, Tagitize. Save all your tagging styles in one place and tag one or several views or sheets at once. Also, say goodbye to overlapping tags. Simply review generated tags and make any final tweaks with the handy tag audit commands. Try Tagatize completely for free using the link in this video's description. If you like this lesson and want more like this every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, have a good day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.